artificial intelligence has gone from science fiction to a, a, almost everyday reality now and it's changing our lives in really profound ways. I think personally speaking, it's one of the most exciting developments that I've encountered at Wired. And I'm curious just to turn it over to both of you and uh, to talk about this. Joey's the expert, so I'm going to defer to him. Uh, but my, my general observation, as you said, is that it is seeping into our lives in all sorts of ways that we just don't notice. Uh, and part of the reason is because uh, the way we think about AI uh, is colored by popular culture and by science fiction. And uh, I know it's a familiar distinction to a lot of your readers between uh, general AI and specialized AI. Specialized AI is really the stuff that we've been doing for quite some time, we're just getting better and better at it, and that is figuring out uh, using algorithms whether computers can figure out increasingly complex tasks. And we're seeing that happen uh, in every aspect of our lives, from medicine to transportation to uh, how electricity is distributed. And uh, it promises to create a vastly more productive and efficient economy. Uh, and if properly harnessed, can generate uh, you know, enormous uh, prosperity for people, opportunity for people, uh, can cure diseases that we haven't seen before, uh, can make us safer because it eliminates uh, inherent human error uh, in a lot of uh, work. But it also has some downsides that we're going to have to figure out in terms of, uh, if not, um, eliminating jobs requiring people to think differently about their occupations. Uh, it could increase inequality, uh, and we've seen that in technology generally and globalization. It can suppress wages. And so we're going to have to develop new social constructs in order to embrace fully and, and, and optimize uh, this, this new technology. Um, in science fiction, what you hear about is generalized AI, right? So computers start getting smarter than we are and eventually conclude that we're not all that useful and then... Off we go. Off we go, you know, or you know, either they're, you know, drugging us and keeping us fat and happy or, you know, we're in the matrix. We're and, living in a simulation yeah, now. We're in, or we're living in a simulation now. And, yeah, Joey's said this a lot more. Uh, my impression, based on talking to my top science advisors, is, is that uh, we're still a reasonably long way away from uh, that kind of generalized AI. Uh, it's worth thinking about only because uh, you know, it stretches our imaginations and it gets us to think about what our core values and uh, issues of choice and free will that actually do have some significant applications for uh, specialized AI. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, that's probably not the thing that we need to worry about the most right now. We need to figure out how do we get uh, what's already happening around us, but is just going to be m more and more uh, incorporated in our daily lives. How do we get that right? Yeah, I think this may upset some of my students at MIT, but. One of the, the concerns that I have about AI is it's been a predominantly male gang of kids, mostly white, who were more comfortable talking to computers and human beings that have been building the core computer science around AI. Yeah. And not all of them, but a lot of them feel that if they could just make that science fiction general AI, we wouldn't have to worry about all the messy stuff like politics and society. And, and there's almost like a church of this belief in, right. in headquartered in Silicon Valley. And so, so, so I, that's a concern because right. I think a lot of people figure that the machines will just figure it all out. Right. And they underestimate the difficulty. And I feel like this is the year that uh, artificial intelligence becomes not just a computer science problem, but something that the White House, that I, I've been working very closely with a friar in the Dominican order right. who's trying to understand um, you know, Bitcoin encryption and AI um, right. from the perspective of the Catholics. And so, so I think that, that a lot of other people need to be involved. And the difficulty has been that the computer science community, aren't, they're not an easy gang to talk to. And so, <laughs> and I think, you know, the White House here, your, your, your team and yourself, I mean, you've, you've probably gotten your head around this more than any other um, 
anybody else in, in history. And it's, it's good timing because I think everybody needs to understand yeah. it. And I think that that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a key piece. I think it's, and we use, at, at the Media Lab, we're using the term extended intelligence because yeah. we don't think it's going to be us and an AI. That AI, just like Google, just like everything, will be built into the laws, into the government, into society. And, and, and how that behaves is important. And it's like the Internet. And, and when we were doing a lot of the early work on the Internet, we thought it would just solve democracy. Right. That democracy would just get better. But now you've got that didn't work these. Out so well. uh, it didn't work out so well. <laughs> and, and we do think that we can push the pendulum back. Yeah.